just having a go if yeah. you put yourself in the mix you know like i think i cold yeah. called you and said hey man yeah. look to be honest that that's what grabbed me right from the start Hello and welcome to Level Up with Dwayne Pierce. My dream is to improve the residential building industry for all involved. Throughout this podcast, we're going to be chatting to all types of industry experts to make sure that builders, tradies and clients all have a fantastic experience. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Level Up with uh, me, Dwayne Pierce. Um, we've got another cracking episode for you today because I've got uh, young Shane Steele here with me. What a cracking last name. I think that is just friggin' awesome. <laughs> but um, Shane actually runs uh, Steele um, House Raising. He's a, he's a strapping young lad. He's done our work for a little while and um, really looking forward to having a chat with you, mate. So thanks very much for coming along. Uh, thank you. Thanks for having me. And um, so let, we'll get straight into it. So um, I think we've got a lot to talk about today. Like you, you're a young bloke. You, you're doing really well. Um, like you do a fantastic job for us um, on the work that you do. But um, like I'm just really keen to know more about you, how you got into the industry. Um, and I think our listeners um, especially will probably want to know a little bit more about house raising. So yep. um, mate, let's get into it. Like what how did you get into it and what's your what's your passion for house raising um so i am a fourth generation house re-stumper i'd say so my my great grandfather this is probably before business like business times per se uh re-stumped houses obviously with timber stumps and then uh following that my my grandfather was a boiler maker and i don't know how how it sort of worked out but my nan started buying and selling removal homes you know yeah and so they i think they used to pay someone to move them and then my grandfather would stump them you know make yeah. the stumps so lo us. locally like in brisbane uh no. yeah so they were, they were down yeah. at uh yatla yeah they actually uh the old waterford drive-in was where they started oh, yeah, right. yeah so that was their yard yeah that was their yard yeah, right. um i think it's a retirement village now but yeah that's where my parents grew up uh and then so that they obviously worked up to a point where they bought their own truck and trailer and started doing their own like house removals, you know? Yeah. And then my mom and her two brothers took over, took over that once they got old. Yeah. Like house removing is real. Every, every, pretty well, every house removing company's third or fourth generation, you know? Yeah. So yeah. It's real. Uh, Cause been, no one else like, wants to do it. They make their kids, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, it's, it's bloody hard work from what I've yeah. seen. So, um, and look, the ones, like um i know you it was your uncle wasn't it you got to um on one of our projects you got yeah. him in to to help out a bit with his truck and move the house around the site for us but um and so yeah what so you've obviously moved away from the house removal side of it yeah and so just... so my my mum she probably saw something special in me semi <laughs> we 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 live around they live around beanley down that area that's where yeah. the yard is down in yatla and uh sent me up to nudgy to go to school yeah I think she's probably <laughs> unimpressed. <laughs> um, so right. I actually I finished school, and I I uh, sort of I probably didn't take school too seriously, if I'm being honest. Like I, so you like I, I think you're probably similar to me. Like I had no interest at all in school. I yeah. just couldn't wait to get out, do like just work hard. Like that was my passion. 100%. So, and then, so prior to school, so my cousin Keith, he still works for, still works for my mum and her two brothers. So yeah. they run the company currently to this day. Yeah. And my, my uncle, my uncle Keith, so my granddad's name's Keith. And my, <laughs> also, so I was lucky enough that I wasn't the first born son. So I got a good name, <laughs> but, um, Mate, I just love the last name. Yeah. Steel. Bloody so, hell, be Superman or something. <laughs> People always think I spelt it wrong. Like, <laughs> like, like, uh, so, uh, so yeah, like we sort of, mum ran the office and, and did the admin stuff. So, and then, so every school holidays, I oh, should probably get in trouble for this, but every school holidays we'd get shipped off to work, you know, yeah. and it, it made me pretty tough because, you know, like at Smoko, we, 
have chin up competitions. Like we never did any like any real work. And my uncle would be like, "Oh, who can smash a concrete stump in less hits with a sledgehammer?" And just, <laughs> just, cool. just stupid shit. Like, and you but know, mate, all, all that shit makes you who you are. Like, oh, hundred percent building but, character. But it was awesome because like, uh, like I, I had two or three cousins there every school holidays, and we, like we have a wrestle in the backyard, like. <laughs> Yeah, I can't imagine what people are thinking when we rocked up to their house, but uh, <laughs> well, you, you, yeah, especially these days. Yeah, you did well, that these you, days. Yeah, you, you couldn't, but it was it was real good, you know. Like, and the stuff they made you do, like who can dig a hole the fastest, you don't realize now, but they just making you work hard without yeah. thinking about working hard, you know. And yeah. probably out of mum probably sent me up here for school because out of all the kids that worked, I was probably. I definitely I was probably the, the least hard worker, you know, which yeah. is, people will go, oh, I'd hate to meet the other ones, but. Yeah, I was, well, I was, well, mate, that surprised me because, yeah, yeah. I was um, probably a bit entrepreneurial, I guess yeah. you'd say, you know, like, uh, so I think mum sent me up to school or up school up here thinking I'd become a doctor or a lawyer <laughs> or something of the sorts. Yeah. And I guess, yeah. I guess I got to high school and. The, like it had its distractions. I, I love playing footy and I love just having a good time with my mates. And I probably, yeah, probably, I, I I was on my all my report cards. Like I was pretty mathematically gifted. I was good at English, but I didn't really yeah. wasn't really about it. And then just like tech, like I, I really liked like welding yeah. and, and building stuff. You know what I mean? Um, so did you you finish all your schooling? I finished, went to I finished all my schooling. Yeah, I was probably having too much of a good time and and. Mum said, "If I, if I left school, I'd have to go move houses. Move houses. <laughs> so I, I stayed till the end. Um, I think that, like, so what, probably one thing there, because like it actually took me a long time. It's probably actually only in the last couple of years that I have sort of, uh, I guess, not been as hard on myself. Like I, I really gave myself a hard time for not putting in an effort at school, and I think I, I actually probably used that." In a lot of the issues I had in, in the early days in my business and things, I, I would use that as, as an excuse that I hadn't um, I hadn't put in the effort at school. I wasn't an intelligent person. I, I not, wasn't good at reading and writing. And it, it's only in the last couple of years I've um, I've really got over that. So I don't think I sort of feel that you might be holding a bit of a grudge that you didn't turn out the way Nudgy would have liked you to turn out. Yeah. But like everyone's different. And I, like for, mate, from what I've seen, and so how, how long? I think you've been doing our work for maybe four. Four years now, maybe? probably three. I would say three years. Um, and mate, in the time that I've known you, like you're, you've uh, like I've seen you grow. Like you, you're definitely very passionate, and you're, you're a good worker. I um, I think <laughs> some days when it's pissing down rain and you're trying to get concrete <laughs> at three o'clock, some days I think fuck, I should have just. <laughs> they're, they're the days I wish I did better at school. Uh, yeah, crawling so over houses. I so yeah, once I finished school. I went straight back to moving houses yeah. um, until I, like I said, I was having a gap year, but I, like I, I, you know, I, I worked at a place called Sharon Equipment, building cranes for a little bit and then yeah. moved houses for a little bit. Uh, and, you know, being 16, I probably, I really liked carpentry. Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but it wasn't house removing. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, you know, when you're, you know, when you're 16 or 17 and you, you, you know, six of us are jumping in the work truck every morning and you're hard up for money to buy a smoko and you see, you know, builders rocking up with brand new Land Cruisers, <laughs> you think, fucking hell, I wouldn't mind doing this, you know, like, so, and, and obviously you don't know the complexities of it yeah. until you, till yeah. now, you know, but, uh, so. Yeah, everyone thinks the grass is greener, mate. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, so how, how old were you when you started? Start, so you, you did a bit of fluffing around for a few years, and then uh, probably probably I wouldn't say a few years, probably six months. Yeah, and then uh, so as I said, I was probably I was probably out of like so I come my mum has uh, eight siblings, so we come she from was. come from a, a, a big family, you know. Yeah, and I was probably the one that mucked around a bit out of you know there's four or five kids that went to yeah. work, every, you know, and I I probably didn't work the hardest, and it was uh, it's probably a bit sad that I had to happen this way, but. My granddad was dying of cancer and he said uh, he um, he was a real hard worker. Like I've never, like I've never, and 
was Boilermaker, but like I go to his, even like now they passed away, obviously I sometimes go to his house. He was wheelchair ridden for like the last five or 10, they told him he had six months to live. And uh, he lived for another 10 years, but wheelchair yeah. ridden, but still went to went to work every yeah. day. I'd lift him into the into the truck to, you know, sometimes I go up help him do and restump and yeah. out west. I'd lift him into the truck and he'd drive and you'd have to lift him back out into the, you know, and he's just, it's a, it's just tough, you know. And he sort of said to me, he said, look, like I, oh, I fucking haven't got much left to go. You got to do something with yourself because like, I love you. Yeah. Before you, before I die, I'm fucking, just, yeah. you know. Um, and I fucking, I just said, fuck it. I'll just try and get in a carpentry apprenticeship. Like, yeah. I, I, I like building stuff. I'll see how it goes. And sure That's enough. That's awesome, mate. Like, the, 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 like so the, the, you've been able to spend that time with him. You've, you've, uh, yeah. And like for him to push you along like that and for you to jump, jump in and run with it, that's awesome. 100%. And so I got a carpentry apprenticeship and then uh, got a carpentry apprenticeship. I told him about it and then he died probably two days later. So it was... Good. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was good, you know. Yeah. And so even there'd be some day, and I was working for a builder, and I don't know if I'm allowed to say him on him, but <laughs> his name his, his name's Rod from Myriad Projects, and he yeah. he is small time builder, and and probably similar to you, real he come from project management background, yeah, um, and real strenuous on on doing a good job, you know. But but was it was commercial based, you know? We started off doing Renos and went to commercial, and I hate I hate commercial with yeah. passion. Uh, just like there's no love in it, you know. No, it's so, all just well, mate. They stick tenants in, and like there's no, there's yeah, no thought in it. That's exactly right. Um, and I think we were doing window reveals for like, oh, six months. We were doing window <laughs> reveals, and and the, and they were Tassie Oak window reveals, yeah. and you couldn't. There, there was no you weren't supposed to face fix them. All you were allowed was like four or five finishing nails, and it was all Caulfield block. Yeah. So I do go drill twenty four mil holes with a. Put masonry a timber, bit and yeah. put a timber dowel in so you could just shoot a yeah. finish nail into that you know yeah. so i literally was on a hammer drill for the best part of like six months and every day i just woke up thinking fuck this like, <laughs> so the carpentry <laughs> friendship didn't really turn oh, out to... yeah like it uh but same deal like i said yeah. oh, i told me granddad i'd give it a red hot crack and i ended up getting on with another builder and and finished my apprenticeship yeah good on you and and i really enjoyed carpentry and uh and then so just just touch, just on touching on that so a big part of the level up and and these podcasts and everything i'm trying to do in the industry is to really help the younger generation coming through because I, like i had an incredibly tough time um until i started owning and taking responsibility for things but like the story you've just told um even about your carpentry apprenticeship and just the fact that so much of the time you, you're not doing shit you like doing but you've oh. got to tough it out and you've just got to and that that was what builds your character and builds your resilience and and will make you a better whatever trade you end up being a better business person and so i think so many people these days um and this look i'm not i don't want to categorize people but um people just don't put in the effort like we've, we've had guys that turn up and we put them on for an apprenticeship and like so I, i'm I still call myself like I'm a real builder. Like we do everything. The footings that like you've seen on our jobs, we like landscaping, carpentry, concrete, like we, we do the lot. And we'll have a guy turn up to do a, uh, like we'll have him on trial or he might be a school-based apprentice and he might be digging some holes for whatever, a, a fence or pagola or stirrups or whatever, or he might be doing some concrete or whatever. And they, they do it for one day. And then like I've had guys that have come We've had them doing stuff and they've gone to get smoke and they haven't come back. Yeah. And um, like the story, like you just telling that story how you're stuck on a hammer drill for months, like doing shit that you weren't really into, like that's made you who you are now. Oh, 100%. And I sort of said to my boss, I said, like, after, after, so we got that job done and he, like, probably one of the most straight up, like, there'd be, a, and I, so I worked for a few builders, there'd be a few builders, and I won't say who they are, but they haven't even paid my super yet, that yeah. I, you know, yeah. that's one thing I say, I will say about him, and he, and like, he never did overtime, that's one thing I say about apprentices now, they get pretty good money, you yeah. know, like, I think, mate, apprentice, the first year apprentice now is earning more than I earned on my last year, 
Yeah. Actually, actually, a last a fourth year apprentice now is earning more than what I started as a subcontract carpenter. Look, it's unbelievable. It's uh, yeah, and I, I think I was probably not to make excuses or nothing, but I was in that interim phase where they got rid of tool allowances, but you're still getting shit money. It was like well, you know, <laughs> so you money. got ripped off and yeah. you couldn't pay for your tools. <laughs> um, and so he he was a real good builder, but we never did ten minutes of overtime. You know, so yeah. I had to go do hang doors for mates mums and all that sort of stuff too yeah you know and i went so you get ahead oh well, yeah 100 yeah. i was playing colts down in north so like you'd be a gpo every saturday night blowing all your money <laughs> so like it's a sad state of affairs really um so you're in you're into your footy like. yeah 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 so and that's like i um I wasn't like I, I played half a right footy but i was never much good i'm actually half blind in my right eye yeah um from from birth so the only way i sort of half stood out but i was just jamming people you know so like that and that's uh so I, you were you a forward yeah i played i played lock yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah so i i think i had one coach say to me once i wouldn't put my feet where you put your head but <laughs> so that's why it looks like this um, um so did you finish your apprenticeship yeah i did yeah so i finished my apprenticeship and then Worked for a few architectural builders and that's sort of like, and I'm not speaking ill of any other house, Ree Stumpers or, or whatnot, but so obviously house raising is, is a big thing in Brisbane. So Yeah. Yeah, well, that, mate, that every was, street you drive down has got an old yeah. house, hasn't it? So we're obviously getting house raises done and like, and, I, and, and I'm not innocent from ever making a mistake. You, you'd be yeah. lying to say you were, yeah. but just, just a few things that you know if i did a shit job when i was working for my parents my uncle would be kicking my ass in the backyard it wasn't like oh fuck, yeah. you should have done this right but yeah. like so and i think especially being a chippy you know like if you if you got posts that are hard up in on a window against the plan and you got a hundred mil of beam left over you just push it that way and yeah. and not tempt fate that the boys put it 15 mil out of plumbing and it's yeah. in the window you know yeah so if you i find and that's why i was like oh well i can and and, and the other thing was I see, and even builders now, I, and, that, and maybe it would be different now if I, if I try to start a building company now, but at the time I, I wanted to work for myself. I, I left working for a builder who was a real good dude and I went and worked for a builder who was like, sort of not shafted me, but yeah. wasn't, wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't doing the right thing. Well, they poached yeah. me and said, oh, it's going to yeah. be like this, it's going to be like this. And I said, look, I'm not leaving unless I, in, unless it's like this, this, and this, and I yeah. got there, and it, and it wasn't the case. And I thought, yeah, there's plenty of that goes on. I thought, fuck this, like, I can't, I can't work for someone. But I, I, I don't like doing. I didn't like the idea of doing co contract carpentry, like, yeah, like new homes. Don't, they don't do much for me, and then architectural stuff. I just, I knew I could, I can read plans pretty well, and I, I thought. So you, you've obviously like you're brought up in that background, like removal houses and stuff, yeah. and houses like that, and you've obviously got a passion for it. Yeah. And um, like I think it's good that you, like you've you've tried things. Like you obviously your, your granddad told you to have a crack. You went and had a crack. You did your apprenticeship. Um, you've you've done the hard yards, and like I think it's good on you for for coming making a decision to to go and have a crack on your own. Well, that's that's it. And I I wanted to work for myself, and I thought like for for argument's sake some people i think some people ought to know whether they're uh i don't know whether they think they're better than what they are or they're of, of, like i wouldn't i wouldn't start a building company if i didn't have 10 years experience as a supervisor yeah. even, even when i was doing even when i was working on all these jobs I, I had a diary and i'd write down like all right we're doing we're doing ship lap cladding on the ceiling and I'd work out how many, after work, I'd work out how many square meters it was. And I'd be yeah. like, right, there's two blokes. We fucking fucked around doing this in the corner because there's yeah. a downpipe there and it took ages to scribe it. But rucka, yeah. rucka, rucka. And then when I'd go to Cashies or whatever, and I, nah, I didn't do anything. <laughs> um, no, that's just part uh, of the game. Um, but you, you were, you were, educating yourself like you're, you're taking notes of what you're doing and then using that to help yourself when you're doing your jobs on the weekend so you can that, lay the right time and right materials that's exactly right and then but then when i wanted to work for myself i was like right i will go get me builder's license and i just looked at the the like or probably just made my head explode just thinking about like how much would go into yeah 
So I thought I can I can work for myself. I can and and as I said, not to knock any other house raisers, but I, I thought I could stand out doing a yep. doing a better job than what other people could, and and I'll I'll, I'll try and be a half right bloke. Like I'll, yep. I'll I'll be straight up with you. The boys put a post in the wrong spot yesterday. We're putting a new post in yeah. t- tomorrow on Saturday. So, yeah. Oh mate, look, yeah. I I can definitely vouch for you, and and I think like it's that is the important part that you own it because nothing pisses me off more like when we have a trade or, or a supplier or anybody that stuff's up in order, stuff's up something on site or, or, or myself, one of my old boy, uh, own boys or whatever it may be. But if you make a mistake, it's okay to make that mistake. Just own it. Like own it and move on and fix it. Like you've done quite a few jobs for us now and um, like the thing that really uh, makes me gel with you is like, that I think that house raising is a really hard job, like, and when you, especially when you've got to twist them, slide them, bloody move them around. Like, I, I think there's a lot more involved in what you do than what most people think. And like, obviously, on our jobs, like you know, I'm a I'm a perfectionist, yeah. and like we we put a lot of time and effort into marking things out and making sure we're working with you guys and, and all that sort of stuff. And like we have, there's been a couple of tiny, like uh, very small things I on think, our jobs. And you're the first one, like as soon as I ring you, you're back there. And yeah. uh, that's what I really appreciate. But the other thing that's made me really gel with you is um, you've you've got passion to learn. So like you, you've run me a few times and got advice and we've just had a bit of a chin wag about certain situations that you've got yourself in or that you're thinking about doing or whatever. Um and I think the fact that you do that just shows so much about your character, and and I think I think you're going to go a long way, mate. Like I think you're you're a really hard worker. Yeah, well, I think same deal. I think people's ego gets in the way a lot. Like, yeah. like I'll, I'll be honest with you, I drive past other house raisers' jobs, and I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> that's how they did that. That's how, like, you know what I mean? You got yeah. a dicky ass house, and they picked it up, and so yeah. you know, and you're like, oh yeah, I'll do that next time, you know. Whereas yeah. like, I don't know if they do that. I don't know if other people do that, but I'm always, <laughs> yeah. I'm always. There's looking always room for improvement. Oh well, like if you can take a bit from him and a bit from him, and then you're doing a better job, that separates you. You know what yeah. I mean? And then that's, I think, yeah, like, I think people get caught up. Ego is a big thing, eh? Like in our game, like, you know? um, and even I get caught up in it sometimes. You know, you're like, oh fuck, this bloke's doing this, but <laughs> like, it's all like it's not, it's not always, it's not always as it appears. You know? And yeah, yeah, no, exactly. So. How so? How long have you been running your own business now? Because you're still only a young fella. So I think it would be I think maybe f- close to four years now. Yeah. So I think I was 21, 21 and a half or something when I when I thought oh yeah, well, and all it started was. So you're only 25, 26 now, eh? 25. Holy shit! Mate, that's um, that's awesome. So and that's it. It's even more awesome because I know where you've gone in the last couple of years. Like you've you've bought some machinery you've got a yard like yeah you're, you're really kicking some goals so like it for all the young guys out there and it doesn't matter what trade they're doing like what given that the experience you've had and the lessons you've had to learn like if someone out there is currently doing an apprenticeship or thinking about even thinking about getting into the industry uh what's some advice like what, what what's maybe the top three things that you would recommend that someone does before they take the leap as I said, but like you got to, especially if you're new, you got to take on board what people have to say, you know. And I like, I, 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 there's been points where I haven't, and I've, you end up red in the face, and you're like, I'm, I'm a dickhead, you know. <laughs> and nothing, nothing beats effort and persistence. Like, yeah. If you're like, don't take that the wrong way, where you're like, oh, it's all good that I fucked this quote. I'm just gonna work ten hours for free, but like just having a go if yeah. you put yourself in the mix you know like i think i cold yeah. called you and said hey man yeah. i want to raise want to raise your house and, yeah know, like just and and having belief in yourself you know like well, mate, that, like to be honest that that's what grabbed me right from the start because you i think during that first conversation when you rung me you told me that you'd only been operating for one or two years and um i was like shit this this bloke's keen like, i might have even bullshitted you as well <laughs> <laughs> only six months or so you know um, but, um the, the fact that you had the balls to do that um meant a lot to me like because that that was me back in the day like 100%. when i when i started subbing that was me like telling a few porkies to get 
the work and then just putting in everything, every effort and every bloody bit of me that I could to make sure I did the right thing. Yeah, 100%. And um, everyone likes to see someone having a crack, you know? Yeah. And that's like, and then so with, with buying the yard and that sort of stuff, from, the, from day dot, I, I know however people want to run their business, that's all, all good. But from day dot, I've always made my own steel. Like from yeah. the, my granddad was a boiler maker. I went to night school. While I was doing my apprenticeship in carpentry, I went to night school. And I, I'm not a qualified boiler maker, but I've got a certificate three in uh, steel fabrication. I've got a QBCC yeah. license for steel fabrication. Yeah, that's awesome. So I, I'm a qualified structural welder, you know. So, and like I found, you know, if you've got an account, for argument's sake, if you've got an account with a smaller, smaller fabricator, they'll they'll probably do it a little bit cheaper than a, a bigger fabricator but you're on a short leash, you know what I mean? So, yeah. and then if yeah. you've got an account with a bigger fabricator, Brisbane Post and Beans, for example, you, like they'll give you a hundred grand account, but yeah. you're waiting a week for posts. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they might have better, turn, you know, you know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah, I know what you mean. you're not a big fish anymore. Yeah. Whereas if you've got a smaller yeah. fabricator, you are. However, they don't have the means to give you like yeah. 50 grand of hulk worth of steel, you know? And, and when you're talking raw Well, it's st- important to know all that because that, helps your business 100%. because you need to be dealing with people that will turn things around in a timely manner that will help you out so so look just just back on that so number one was like be open-minded and listen to people take people's advice number two was be persistent i think wasn't it yeah <laughs> um, well, yeah be persistent. so what, what's number and three number three would be be honest to yourself as well like the reason why i left that job was because i thought i thought Fuck, if I'm getting paid $7.95 an hour, like I've done three months of, and that three months of hammer drilling turned into three months of building hoardings. Do you know what, do you know yeah. what I mean? I said, and, and that's not where I look, that's not where I wanted my carpentry. If, if you want to be a commercial carpenter, then that's, that, yeah. that, that might, may be the way you want to go. You know, if you want yeah. to chase the big hourly rate on an EBA site, then by all means do that. Yeah. But I wanted to, build shit i could stand back and go fucking hell like have, have a go like hand yeah shit, so you, you know? you've um I, I, i'm getting the impression that you're you're very driven like um, you yeah. uh you've got goals I, I think that's that's definitely one thing that's got me to where i am like you, you have to have goals and like i'm not sure if you like i, I do a lot of cuckoo shit now like i think it's um, <laughs> i think it helps but uh like i write shit down like i've got a journal i, I don't i would like to say i do it daily but i don't but it, definitely a few times a week um i'm really big on writing my goals down and making sure i'm doing something to work towards them so the, the fact that you've been like it's all good that that first carbon apprenticeship didn't work out because you had a bigger picture in your mind and, and so you've done what you've needed to do to get to that bigger picture and and i was always up front and honest with him and i said look this is like well, this isn't what i want to do and yeah so we got a real good relationship i, I quote jobs for him yeah. to this day you know yeah so yeah like Whatever your goals, are. and and that's exactly right. I'd like to say I write it down. Oh, I'd probably it'd probably be a monthly thing for me if I'm being honest. I probably yeah. could I probably could bring that forward a bit and do it to, to a weekly yeah. thing. But it's funny you say write down goals. Um, so I bought my first house when I was 19 in Deegan, and everyone, all my mates were like, "What are you doing?" And it like I think it cost me 240 grand, which is like. Unfair. Hey, that's a, that's a good effort, you know. And see, so people. This is another thing. Like people don't know behind the scenes. Like the fact that you've worked since you're 15, 16, and you've been able to achieve that's unreal. Yeah, and then uh, like I had a goals wall spray like written on the wall because like I got it, and it, like it was people. It was in a bad way, you know, just like an old fibro shack. And you lived in it. Yeah, we yeah. kicked on every weekend. <laughs> like it was like. Um, that was like the go-to after you know you you finish up in the valley at three o'clock in the morning and come home and everyone I knew would be at my house you know what I mean and <laughs> that's awesome uh, you got to go through those times like, everybody's got to and look even now like every now and then you got to cut loose you got to have a good time hundred percent and like I I uh, I still didn't cheat myself but like I like oh, I never. I had mates used to go to, you know, Rick's on a Thursday night and then the boundary on a Sunday and you just like, like I'd still turn up to work, you know, because yeah. you got to go where your bread's buttered, you know what I mean? Yeah. But but then the same, like same thing, we'd uh, like doing demo or whatever, like 
all my housemates just chipped in. Like, you know what I mean? So, like, I, I renovated that for, like, I got my parents to lift it and then me and my cousin Keith stumped it on a Sunday and mixed, like... I, like just the way the week worked out, I could like I had the concreter booked in yeah. the next Thursday or whatever, so I had to get the plumber in and do the under slab. And you know, you're like I was like a second year apprentice or something. You know, I think yeah. I, I think I used that government like loan that you get as an apprentice to like yeah. do my concrete slab. Yeah, like <laughs> so everything like you know everything's on a budget. So and then I was like, fuck, I, if I. So you're a, bit, you're a bit of a wheel of deal. Like you're always oh, singing outside the box. What it sounds like. Hundred percent. Oh, because if you don't, like if you don't, like that's that's one thing. My parents and my and my grandparents have always sort of they're real, and sometimes they, it's probably to their shortfall. They're real anti anti finance. Do you know? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like if yeah. you if you if you can't save up and if you if you don't have the money, like on I understand with a building company, yeah. it probably gets a bit. But if you don't have the money to do that house raising job, if you can't do that job and not get paid, yeah, then don't do it. Not that you're not going to get paid, but just oh, mate, you, I think that, that's awesome advice for everyone. Like um, I'm on the same page. Like obviously, there's you have to have debt. Like there's, there's, 100%, there's, yeah. whether it's business debt or like buying a house or whatever, and there's good debt and bad debt. But I do think it's a um, I do think it's a really bad problem now. Like I, I was always brought up like if you can't pay for it, you you, you can't have it. Like oh. and, and they're like you don't take your car for a service if you can't pay for it. 100%. Like, so the, um, and it blows my mind these days. Like we, we even went to an event only a couple of weeks ago where um, my wife volunteered and, and worked on the gate and um, uh, it was a big rodeo. And, mate, there was, there was peop- individuals and families paying to get in with afterpay. And see, like, to well, think that people, like the society, that's the way people are working. And then like I just, it really blows my mind. Like you and I guess it comes back to your, your work ethic. Like you, you've got to work hard, put money in the bank, and when the money's in the bank, then, then you can then spend that's it. That's exactly right. And and uh, like apprentices with brand new SR5 Hiluxes yeah. do my lid. Like, I, I like, <laughs> so oh, mate, but yeah, I'm, I, I think you and I are on a very similar page. Is like, I my first car, mate, was a uh, old HZ style side Ute. Yeah. Um, that. Like I admit, my my oldie, my old man helped me out, um, purchased it. I think it was about eleven hundred bucks, twelve hundred bucks. Um, he had a big paint shop at the time, and basically, I was working like I was fifteen. Um, actually, we bought it before I was fifteen. Um, and then as soon as I got my first job, basically every day after work, like me and him would be working on that thing, getting it going, and like we painted it ourselves, we did everything ourselves, and like I drove that thing around for years. Like, and then even. Um, even up until probably worth more than an SR5 Hilux these days. Yeah, but, yeah. But, but like it was an old car. Hundred like, percent. Yeah. These young people these days, they want to like. I to me that yeah. I, like I would rather see a young kid turn up in an old shit box um, and put all his money into his tools, show up to work, work hard, and do that, rather than see someone turn up uh, all clean, finance to the hill with a brand new car. Like I just. I've always like I don't know if this is discriminating or not, but it went back when I had a huge subcontract carpentry company. If I was looking for carpenters, a lot of the time I would employ them based on what they showed up in. And if they showed up in a brand new car with a new trailer and everything was all nice and shiny, nine times out of ten I wouldn't employ them. If they turned up with a tray back ute, planks, ladders, all their gear, like their trailer all knocked around, I'd put them on because to me it showed that they were a hard worker. Yeah, 100%. Um, and that's, so, talking, my first year, I think I had maybe, starting my first my first year of carpentry, I think I might have had 10 grand saved, right? Yeah. Or it might, and, or it might have been 15. And I bought a, bought a Hilux Workmate with like 150,000 Ks on it off some old dude yeah. down the Goldie. And it was a, it was actually an SR because I, I remember it had a, Four liter V six, you know. So I was like, oh, so upmarket, yeah. mate. Um, upmarket, yeah. Power windows and the <laughs> and the head unit, you know. Yeah. Um, and I same deal, wheeler and dealer. I knocked him down, like knocked him down heaps on the phone. Like, oh, come, mate, I'll come grab it today. Rack, rack, rack. <laughs> I get there and I got him to knock another five hundred bucks off because I said, oh, you got the stock wheels there. I'll, like, I don't need the rims. Like, and then I had that Ute until 
I I had that ute until maybe six months ago. I sold it to one of the boys and he crashed it. Like, yeah. But uh, and and then same deal. And then I bought an old like yeah, bought an old builder's trailer off some dude out of country, and it was all rusty and shit. So me and my cousin Keith like. Every, Keith's done a lot. Sounds yeah. like a lot of time. Oh, I, I, me and him, like, we get like, <laughs> we we uh we have like we we have a good time, you know. Like he's uh, I no, I can't. Like I don't really drink too much, and I I don't. I find it hard to relate to people because people are like, what the fuck are you doing at seven o'clock on a Saturday night? Like, why <laughs> why are you why are you down in the shed working on your car? Like I can't. Yeah. Whereas yeah. me and him, like obviously we're cousins we're from the same sort of we come up in the same back like we get yeah. on pretty well you know what i mean so what's mate what's it, it interesting what's it like at a uh at a christmas deal or something with your family oh. if they're all house dumpers and house removals like it'd be yeah, an a, interesting conversation i reckon tell you what uh bundy run would probably make a bit of money i tell you that much like, <laughs> but uh yeah no it's it's good you know that that's yeah. and that's one thing that's one thing that was always good like yeah and that and that's probably why i don't uh i can't get on with some people is with my family like because there's so many of us anytime you went to anyone's house you're getting fed you're yeah. like there's no everyone's helping each other everyone's helping each other whereas yeah. some people obviously some people aren't that way inclined and you know um so let's move forward so yeah like i, I think your story is unreal mate I, I love it um so what like you've been doing it a while now yep. um I'm super impressed that someone at your age is doing what you're doing. You've you've um, you've bought some machinery and you you've now got your yard. So is, is your is that a big goal of yours to set your yard up, be self sufficient, make your own steel? Hundred like- percent. That that was a it sort of was a was a big goal of mine from from the start to do that. Um, so originally I was at me and my mum's helped me out a fair bit. I was at my old girl's house in like a six by nine shed. With the the first like ten jobs I did, I had a drop saw that cut ten mil out of square. So like, you know, you, you'd be like, oh, I just drill the holes a couple hundred mil deeper, so you could make a stock length like half of like if you're doing a house three point eight high, and the holes were twelve hundred, you'd say, oh, I'd drill them fourteen fifty, and old mate's like, oh, you use more concrete, but it just meant I could just get the drop saw and dock the <laughs> dock the post in half and weld the base plate in the concrete on the shitty end and use the factory edge for the nice you know nice straight top so so you and, were you were just cutting a stock length in half yeah using the factory ends as your square ends to weld to your beams oh obviously, because obviously because because you know, your drop saw wouldn't cut square. yeah that's like that and there was like it was me granddad's old drop saw i'd taxed out of your shed and there's like this old makita thing and you had to hold the gap like oh, it's yeah. a scene anyway and then you're out there and it's and you couldn't like when you're doing a real tall job, the posts would stick out, stick out the shed, you know. So you'd yeah. be getting rained on while well, you stick welding, like, you know. And, <laughs> and you, oh, mate, I, I just think it is awesome. That's your story. So you've done whatever it takes to get, get everything done. And, and then, like, the first three or four jobs I did, I dropped all the styles off on a Saturday, but it was because, uh, I had that Hilux like Ute in a car trailer with, you know, the steel sticking a meter over the front, a meter over the back, you know. And when I when I went and quoted the job, when I'd go and quote the job, you know, you'd have your hair slicked back. You, yeah, this is just me quoting car, but little do they know you're doing four loads back to the yards, at, like back to mums to pick up the blocks. It's, so you were carrying all your styles around in the back? By of hand. The- we used to do it like for the first six months. I didn't have a bobcat. It was, it was fucked. Like, it was honestly, like... <laughs> And then, but Mate, you've you've definitely earned everything you've got. Hundred percent. Sure. And then and then moving forward from that, anytime I, I, I anytime I bought something, I'd buy like my gear truck. I bought off this old dude out at uh, D Bay. It was real funny. And I bring him up, and I'm like, oh yeah, I wouldn't mind buying a truck. Rah rah rah. And <laughs> I go out there, and he goes, oh, you're the first, you're the first non courier to come like. He said it probably a bit more racist than that, but he said you're the first <laughs> non courier to come buy it. Yeah, you know I got off at 25. If you can give me 22, you can have it. You know because I spat me little spiel. It's my first truck. Rah rah rah. You know, and I still ring him up to this day. Oh, what happens here? Like because I I do wouldn't say I'm great on the on the mechanical side of things, but I do all me and my little brother do all my servicing on the trucks yeah. and all that, and work yeah. on my cars and that sort of stuff. All that stuff, and it just allows you to probably have better gear than what you could probably afford if you yeah. do you know what i mean so, so you, it sounds like you're pretty big on um 
like making sure you put back into the business so the business can keep growing and expanding and yeah 100 percent. i um for the first two years i don't think i took a wage like I, I paid my mortgage and food yeah and uh well like and it got to the point like it was, it was actually it was real hard time it got to the point where i was halfway through renovating my house and that like that's the other thing when i started my business i was a bit of a dickhead about it like i had no money saved because I'm mid reno and I just thought, fuck this, I'm going to do my own thing. So like it got to the point where I was half renovated my house, had to move back to my mum's because I couldn't afford, like the house wasn't finished. Yeah. So you try, so you're, you've taken the deep dive, you're trying to get a business going, you're, you're oh, trying to also renovate a house. hundred percent, you know. And, and keep things going. hundred percent. So I was living at mum's, so I didn't really have to pay for food. I just eat <laughs> left. I think we've all done that. Yeah, mate, in the well, yeah days. That's, that's it. So it's leftovers, and then she still made me pay for power and stuff. Well, yeah. My mum's real onto it with that sort of stuff. She whipped out the last four power bills, the new power bill. Look, your shed's using this much power. You're gonna have to fix me up. You know, but, yeah. but it's only a couple hundred bucks. But still holding me accountable. You know, like helping me out, but not doing it for me. You know, so. Yeah. And then, yeah, same, like everything I've done I've, and I've just saved up till I had the money. The only thing I've financed for the whole company other than the shed was the uh, was the Bobcat. And that was just because yeah. it was 0%. It was almost two. Yeah. And same deal, you need oh, man, you, there's, some debt. There's good know? debt and bad debt. And, and definitely, like, you, you do have to get to that position in your business where um, – is a, like it's more beneficial to take that leap, spend that money, go into a bit of debt because that machine or tool or whatever you buy is going to allow you to get it done three or four times faster so yeah. you get the next job. And um, like I know <clears throat> we've had a, um, a few brief conversations about it, like sort of getting your head around running costs and those types of things and making sure you're charging enough. 100%. Um, like I think that's a massive thing for, for younger people or everyone, but definitely guys that are getting into the industry. Like going from being a carpenter and getting paid an hourly rate to all of a sudden having to pay all the bills, insurances and all that type of and, thing. And that's that's exactly right. And that's that was probably my sort of fail safe at the start. I was like, like even the, the work truck I got, I was looking around because I needed a work truck. And all the ones in Brisbane, like, you know, even now for a... 2005 six NPR truck yeah. with 180,000 Ks on it is uh 30 grand, you know? Yeah. And I was looking like- oh, I remember like, you ringing me when you, I think you might've turned up to one of our jobs not like after uh, you bought that truck yeah. and mate, you, you were stoked, like you had this big smile on your face, and, like check out my new truck. And like, no shit, I bought that for 13 grand from some dude down, down in uh, Coffs Harbour. <laughs> And me and Keith went down and picked it up. <laughs> got it. Got I gotta it. meet this Keith. He keeps going up. Oh, got it back, and it had like, it was an old wine back truck. So like, it only had like ninety thousand k's on it when I bought it. And yeah. old mate must have got it at auction half cheap because like same deal. Rock down there, and I said, look, I only got this much money. I just driven all this way. Yeah. And he sort of said, yeah, right, I know, drums. I got a tray from the wreckers for like eleven hundred bucks. And then me and my little brother are there trying to take the ropes off with the bobcat. It was a fucking scene. Like, <laughs> if you had your time, like if I had the money, if I had the money yeah. at the time, or well, the business had been going long enough to yeah. be able to just put a new truck on finance, I would have done it. But at that point in time, it wasn't that wasn't the case, and I that needed to happen. So it, and I think I that, think it's awesome. I think it's all part of like I said, building your character and. Mate, I think everything you're talking about is really helpful for anyone listening, especially younger guys. But um, look, I know a little bit about the house removing or house raising side of it, but I'm I'm pretty keen to know more about like what you guys do and how you do it. Like I know um, I know if there's homeowners listening, they'll they'll be interested to know. Like obviously you're you're aware. Like we do a lot of social media stuff on our jobs, and um, most of the jobs you've lifted, like we've done walkthrough videos to show people how we mark them out and like. Um, just the little things like um, you taught me how you uh, like we mark all the posts out and you put your coach screw in um, and you give it a little bit of tolerance so that you, you can move the posts around and then you just drop it on the post when it's I right. I don't want to give the other house raiders any hints. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like, yeah, like what what's involved in your industry? Like obviously a big part of it is, you, well, like most trades, like you've got to have a lot of gear. 100%. So that's – that's a – so – what you were saying before about house raising being a, like a hard part of the job, the, the hardest thing I find about 
you get there, you know, on a new home when they got the slab down, then you got running measurements. You can flick lines. Yeah. You don't have that with the house. You got a yeah. fucking wall that's 50 mil bow in it on this site. So the you've you, turned out there's gardens and trees oh, and shit everywhere. And people and... still living under the house. Like what's going? You know, like <laughs> thankfully your work's like some some jobs you do. You just think, oh my god, I'll see you in a week. Get it, get it sorted. I'll come yeah. back. You know. Yeah. Um, so the first thing you do is you obviously you I I go past the job before I start it and work out like the the lifting steels that we use are sort of I got a I got a seven meter bay on the truck bed on the truck and you can't have too much overhang so seven and a half is generally yep. then I have four and a halves and three meter steel so if you got a if you got a eight meter wide Queenslander by twelve meters deep you'll use a you, you know, if and, and that depends on whether it needs to slide. If it needs to slide, you'll use two sevens and you have a three meter overhang and you'll leave that off, off the front to land yeah. on the new new stacks to yeah. you know. Yeah. So that's the first thing you do is I work out the gear we need and then when you rock up on site you obviously cut all the tie downs on the on the house. So you you build your stacks uh you know, like if there's a bathroom, you you work them out. <clears throat> obviously they work out to spacings generally, but if there's a bathroom or or what have you, you it's always amazed me with um like how you work out your weights yeah but, so you, you got to sort of make sure your store is evenly 100 positioned so yeah. the house doesn't well we've seen in the last two days is one that's gone ass up in brisbane but, yeah no good um we, yeah we'll talk about that another day but um so yeah like how do, how do you do that or you just got to wing it i wouldn't say wing it but obviously <laughs> that's there's no specific way i i yeah. I work it out just obviously like I wouldn't say I've got 15 years experience but like my uncle's you know any that, and that's the thing that's the sickest Mate, you thing you would have seen a lot growing up 100% like, and, and the best thing about it like he they've done like, like they don't do too much house raising work probably they're getting a bit on they don't like getting underneath the like you know they do it's better for that like yeah. that's their core business in moving yeah. houses but there's not much they haven't done so anytime in the last three years, I've come to some, I've sort of been like, oh fuck, what's going on here? I'll just ring them up and they're yeah. like, oh yeah, I did one of them, yeah. you know, this is yeah. how you do it, you know? So it's more of an experience thing, but obviously you just gotta, you just gotta like look at bearer checkouts as well, to, depending on like, obviously house raising, you pick the house up and you, the, the problem with house raising is you wanna support it in as much as you can to, like in a perfect world, if you were raising a house and you didn't have to get a machine under it, you'd just do, if it's eight meters wide, you'd have five stacks, 1200, and that'd pick up seven, yeah. you know, you yeah. don't, but then you you literally would have a solid block of stars and you could never get a machine under to yeah. do the new foundation. Yeah. So you, that's why house raising is sort of hard. You, you're you trying to support the house as much as you can, but almost putting the minimum, minimal amount of gear under because- Yeah, because like um for clients that don't know so you, you you're trying to support the house but you also got to take into account where the builder's got to do new foundations retaining 100%. walls slabs plumbing and you got to so, you got to be able to rip all the no one likes taking 100 chops at <clears throat> things so you got to rip all the old concrete out put the new stumps in and nine times out of ten there's still the two yeah. where the stacks are you, you the concrete is so yeah we rock up work out a, a, a lifting game plan we have a bit of a toolbox meeting me and the boys Get right over. So we mark out the stacks. Yep. We build the stacks, take weight on the house, and I always just sort of lift it. You'll probably hear me talk a lot in the imperial measurements. Yes. Uh, you lift it an inch off the stumps. I, I, I do. I've heard you talk about that on the, even our jobs. Like yeah. I, I, uh, what is that just because you're brought up around old timers? That and decks are built with an inch for the styes are six inches by four, 150 by 125. But yeah. if you, if you, you know, obviously. When you're sliding houses or even when you're jacking them up, depending on what ground's underneath it, sometimes the stacks sink into the, or, or even just when you rock up, if it's, yeah. if the ground's not level, you go, all right, chuck that one on its five and those on the, that on its six and then and then yeah. the, that levels up the bottom, you know, yeah. and it's just easier than, I think that's probably <laughs> the, yeah, 150 mil, 100, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? So yeah. you're right, chuck two styles on their six there or the dress down, the, yeah. you know, and, and then when you when you pick the house up, if you just ran the steel hard under the bearers and you had a deck that had an inch full, the steel wouldn't be able to accommodate for that. Yeah. So, and then also if you've got a, you're obviously nine times out of 10, a bear is 125 by 75. That's yeah. just extremely common size. So they're pretty, like in, um, 
I'm not sure on other states, but like definitely here in Queensland, like with having old Queenslanders, like I, I definitely find as a builder, like there's a in in the that certain era of house, they're all very similar. Hundred like percent. They yeah. might just be orientated a different way or whatever, but they're very similar. So there's like there's two main styles where the bearers run like if their house is eight by twelve the bearers run across the house or yeah. there's enough sometimes they're a bit funny where the bearers run front to back and yeah. then and then it always just goes off that size as well like you got an eight by 12 with a veranda on one side which takes uh, takes it to ten and a half or the or then you got a wraparound veranda sorry yeah which takes it you know and, and it's always yeah. 2.4 centers yeah 600 mil centers for the joist nine times out of ten and it happens really like I, i'm always blown away by how quick it is like my um like we'll have you booked in to come and they, like we're real big on our client meetings and stuff and the the client will be asking like oh like when do you think it'll be up and like i'll be uh like oh well, if it gets here tomorrow it'll be up by the following day and they're yeah. like what like i try and to be honest I, and that's probably that's probably happens because i'm on site with the boys yeah i wouldn't say cracking the whip but if you lead by example a little yeah. bit, people people are happy to work hard if you're there working hard with them yeah know? i think that's a awesome point mate like you got you definitely gotta lead by example um so yeah we we set the house up you pick it up an inch and then so what i was saying you work out your dress down so if you got a 125 bearer and you've got a a bigger pfc on the side of the on the side of the bearer obviously if you run the steel hard up to the bearer you're not going to be able to put that pfc into a comp like it's not yeah. there's not enough room to fit it in so yeah so you're allowing you're, for the new steel as you're well you're allowing for the yeah. new so you got to run around look at the plans and go all right well we got a 250 pfc that's going to hang down 125 but then you've got to roll it up on the angle so you instead of packing it down 125 which is five inches you'll pack it down six inches so then you've got an inch of plate yeah. you know what i mean yeah or you, or you might go two fives and give yourself 50 mil yeah. to muck lock no, it's um, a lot more complicated than I think most people think. And uh, lifting it up is just really just the easy part, isn't it? Then you got to come in. Once you set it up, if you set it up right, raising it is like the like you just pump a jack out, so yeah. another block in, and away yeah. you go. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's it's awesome how they go up. We've done a few time lapse cameras, but and then the hard work starts, like getting the steel in, getting the posts in, drilling the piers, like yeah. So obviously, so we like other people do it all different ways. We put the steel in and and jack it up a foot which is 300 mil for those right? <laughs> uh, and that that's and it, that's the other reason why you use imperial it's easy yeah. to like you know you know four styles to a foot because you got two each side so then you're like oh it's gonna go up 10 foot you got six stacks yeah that's 60 times four styles yeah you know and then you that's uh 240 or whatever it is yeah yeah no it's a lot of well you can see why you're good at maths mate at school but um so Look, I, I think you just you you really smashed it out, mate. It's really good to see a young young guy really getting into it and um, and having a crack. And like we've touched on everything, like schooling and um, going through apprenticeships, having hard times, like all that type of stuff. So, like, what are you like? What what's your passion? Like, what's what's away, away from building? Like, so you've grown up around a family that is all in the industry. Um, so it's it's probably no doubt that you're you're always going to end up in the industry in one way or another. Yeah. But what what's like how do you get away from it? What's your like I know you're you're only 25. What, probably, what's your chill out? Probably for the last three or four years I haven't haven't got away from it, and that's probably something I'm I'm looking to do now. Um, it's funny I said everything I've done for the business I've set it up to make it so it's easier, and then because of coronavirus, like unknowingly I made it so you could work at like double capacity but i just did it so i could be like oh yeah we got our own steel so we'll, we'll raise the house send two blokes back to the shed yeah they can make like they can cut the posts and or like oh yeah. weld the post while the boys yeah, are so here. You're, you're in control of the whole process yeah and I, i've done it so it's like chill like i've relaxed you know if i did one house a week it would be fucking mint um but then because of coronavirus it's yeah just gone crazy. Um, so you, you were saying before we started that. Um, so what, what do you work for? About thirty odd builders. There'd be thirty. There'd be thirty builders, give or take one or two. And then so, yeah, like you said, like so all those thirty builders, generally smaller builders, so they might lift one or two homes a year. Correct. And then coronavirus come along, uh, industry homeowners grant stuff. Yeah. The industry has gone through the roof, and now that each of those builders is doing three or four jobs yeah. a year. Yeah, and then you have all the like upstart builders, like, and that's where 
a builder like yourself, you know, like if you if you book me in for a job, and and sometimes like there's been times when I haven't been able to due to unforeseen events, rain, yeah, rah, but rah, you rah. communicate. Like I give give you that, mate. Like you, and and I get that. I think that I think that's actually a good thing for a lot of builders out there. Like I I know a few people I worked for when I was subbing and and stuff, and mate, they would just be abusing the shit out of people on the phone because they hadn't showed up. And yet they'd only rung them a couple of weeks before. Like there was no schedule. Like um, I think it goes both ways. Like the builder needs to communicate with you, like give you an update on how they're traveling and then you update him. And it, it's, a, it's a two-way street. 100%. And sometimes, sometimes builders don't. And then the week before the job, they say, oh, this has happened. We're not ready for you. Yeah, and I'm like, well, you got to wait three weeks now, and they're like, they blow up about it, and I'm yeah. like, well, you're not sitting around waiting for well, them. Well, I've had you book me in six months ago. I'd be a bit of an asshole to turn around and go, oh, sorry, Dwayne, I'm going to push you back a week because this bloke's not ready. Whereas he's yeah. rang me a month ago. Yeah, like, yeah, you look after people. Look and, after and that, you, and that, and that's that's what's hard in times like now because when there wasn't so much work. Yeah, I, I know there's been a couple of times because I always like to know where I'm sitting in the market. I've rang you up. And being like, oh, I had a price up on this job. This is after I won the job. We've already yeah. started the job. We'll just be standing yeah. there, you know? And you're like, oh, look, I didn't even get a quote. I didn't even get a second quote. And you're thinking, fuck now. <laughs> no, <laughs> no but, and, but that, but like always. You've got, you've got to go anywhere you stand. 100%, 100%. And obviously, you've done that many house raises and that many jobs. You'd know if I was trying to fleece you, you know? So, yeah. but like what I'm saying is. But I think a lot of the. That um, puts a lot of confidence in me that. And I don't think I've quoted a job for you that I ha haven't done. That's that's the other thing. Well, the other well, an on flow effect or an on flow from that, mate, is, um, and look, I'm very open with my clients on this stuff as well. Like, because like at the end of the day, if a client wants to question something on our jobs, or or try and supply their own thing, our game, the t the way that our game is, it doesn't matter if I'm hiring you as a subby or a client's looking for a builder. If you keep ringing around, you're going to find someone that's going to do it for the price you want it for. Yeah. But I'm, I'm a big believer in that our industry, the perfect saying for our industry is you get what you pay for. And the difference in your game, I would imagine, is um, like you get someone that puts a post in crooked or out of plumb or misses something and they just don't come back. You never hear from them again. And then, then you've got to outlay money to get that fixed. When yeah. you work with someone reputable like yourself that takes pride in what they do, if there is the odd little mistake here and there, you're the first one back, you fix it, you move on to the next one. And for me, like I'm definitely not the type of builder that shops around. Like we, we don't, we like once we build a good reputation with our trades, we keep them. Yeah. And it's better for me because it's better for my business. I'm not having to, um, for me, it's all about, I don't have to teach someone that my expectations like the quality that i want the way that i work the jobs like how i want the jobs to run um and it's just about building that reputation like we got on well i can call you up i, I can say to you hey look we're like i rang you the other day like um to let you know we got a few jobs coming early next year so straight away you've been able to get back to me and say oh yeah look this is the sort of dates i can have and then i can work my schedules around that and we can work in with each other whereas 100%. if you don't have that relationship most people don't give a shit it's funny too, you're obviously a bit famous in builder circles. People go always <laughs> say, uh, what's he like to work for, you know? What's he like to work for? I said, like, and I'll be straight up with you. I said, oh, he's a bit full on. Um, <laughs> bit full on, but if I had a million bucks to build a house, I'd be fucking ringing him because I know Cheers, mate. I wouldn't, you know, do you know what I mean? Mm. And I, I, I've literally said that to people and like, and when I first started doing your work, I was like, holy fuck, you know, I've, I've you know, and, and but like, <laughs> it's not, but it's not even just, it's not even. Mate, to me, that, that is, to, to me, what you just said there is a big, the best compliment as a builder I can have. And like over the years, um, like the best compliments that I get is we have built houses for our subbies yeah. and, and suppliers and reps. And for me, to be able to build someone's house that that person is working for a shitload of other builders and they've chosen me, like that, that's awesome. And yeah, well, 100% and that's uh, like, and, and and that's what I say to them, like, look, I, it was... Uh, but it's saying not, that, I'm, I'm it's not, not... not that you're full on, it's just, I, like, and, and micromanagement's not a bad thing and, pe and I, I know people <laughs> would get up in arms about it, 
but like I don't give like I come out to I won't even finish that but I I come out to site and you got the post marked out I'm like sweet measure the you, do you know what I mean yeah no one does that people yeah. like some builders say oh can you knock the profiles up and I'm like what's his first slide and I'm like hang on like yeah I think a lot of builders try and palm shit off, mate, and then they don't, and then they don't take responsibility for when it. it goes to, when it goes to shit, yeah. and that's why, like, yeah. that's another thing I say to people starting their own business: if it's not your job, don't do it. Don't do it because yeah. you always get at the end of the job. Like, yeah. if, I if, think a lot of, I, I don't know, I'd like maybe I'd like to think they don't, but um, I hope, like, I, I do think there would be builders out there that do try and palm off work that the trade really shouldn't be doing because they know if there's something wrong, they just palm it back to them. 100%. Or, um, which is wrong. Like the builder, to me, it's the builder's responsibility. And this is why I'm, I'm a bit of a micromanager, I think. The, um, and look, I guess the other incredible thing that I've got is an incredible team. So like my supervisor and my chippies, they're, they're all like, I always tell them, like, they're not tradesmen, they're craftsmen, but, um, and I'd be lost without them. But, I, I take my role really, um, I guess, personally. Like, it, it, like to, for me as a builder, and I think a lot of people out there probably, like clients don't really know what a builder does. And I actually think there's a lot of builders that probably don't step up from a tradie and actually take the responsibility they should have. And for me as a builder, it is my responsibility that everything on my sites is correct. 100%. And the client's paying me to make sure that happens. So the client's paying me to make sure it's set out correctly, make sure it's all done as per the drawings, the engineering, make sure I get certificates, make sure I employ the right trades to do the quality work. Um, and I take that, yeah, I do. I take that very personally. But I'm, I, like the fact that you would get me to build your house, that means a lot. And, that, and that's, um, yeah, well, I didn't mean anything bad by saying you're a bit full on, but like I no, just- No, I don't, mate, I that's, no offense. That's, uh, but I'm happy, like I'm, like I'm not easy breezy working, but like, I, I, like if, if if you want to have a chippy there the whole time supervising me, obviously that costs you money. Do you know what I mean? Well, it's not so much supervising. It's um, not supervising. It's just making sure. Just making sure. Well, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's just working in together to make sure we get a good outcome. Hundred percent. And, and that's uh, nothing. It's definitely nothing against um, you or your boys. Like at nine, to me, it's also about uh, giving my guys the opportunity to learn more. Like they, um, like I said, we've we've learned like the way you use your coach screws and yeah. do your posts like that that's all new to us like we think that's fantastic so it's it's just about learning and and uh and yeah well I, yeah i work with brad a lot he's uh and that's like it I, I don't take it's no skin off my nose if if you've got someone there working in it and they pull me up on something and go hey actually there's a stairwell there we're gonna do you know like just saves me coming mm. back and fixing it anyway like yeah. like i'm not yeah. gonna be opposed to that you know so yeah. that's uh I forgot where we were. No, you're all good, mate. So, what, so where, where to from here? Like, you obviously you've, you've done, you've come a long way in a short period of time. Like, where do you, uh, where do you see steel house raising going? I think, I think the I've probably been trying to do it the last six months or so. Is, is getting my life back a bit would be probably the biggest thing. Like, I, I, uh, I get up, uh, I get up and I go to gym four o'clock pretty well every morning these days i actually got a real it's hard when you go from being a fit person your whole life to maybe a year ago i think i weighed 90 kilos or 91 kilos now but i got up to like 115 and just like carrying that weight and yeah. and, and i'm not real big on caring what other people think but just looking at yourself in the mirror you know like from from being a, a, a fit young chippy to yeah. a fat young chippy i guess <laughs> it's, um, uh, that takes a mental toll on you, hey. Like yeah. you're like, holy fuck! Like I let yeah. myself go. So and that's and do you think look, for you was that the business taking over? Like not the business was taking up all your time. Hundred percent. I'm just not even that, but like just me neglecting shit and then just having no time and being fucked. Like like <laughs> just like. I make my lunches on Sundays now. So then, other and if I don't make my lunches, I get depressed because I'm eating out of a hot block. Because you, you yeah. know what I mean. You're racing yeah. around like a blue ass fly. Sometimes I don't even get to eat my lunches, but like I, yeah. I try and make myself. And that's it's funny how your body works. Like if you don't eat and you just have one big meal morning and night, you, yeah, you actually it's actually worse for you than yeah. like 
I smash a couple of apples in the morning. Oh, right, mate, I love know. the apples. That's my thing. And apple, that, apple and a glass of milk in the morning. 100%, you know, and then that's, uh, so I've been, it's, it's not even, it's not even the business taking over and, and just putting, like, just processes, like, it's all good to make a mistake or, but if you continue to just do the same mistake, like, yeah, like there's been times when I haven't marked out the posts because I was probably hard up for a dollar and just raised the house and then had to mark them out four meters in the air and you end up spending more money than if you just went fuck it we're just going to sit down for 10 minutes and yeah. mark these stumps out and then work it out you know you know so like i've just been i've had to be and like uh exactly what you're saying like i was a bit blase with school and i probably was a bit blase with my life a little bit as well you know like and didn't take like i've, I've always been pretty naturally gifted at maths and that sort of stuff so i probably didn't have to work too hard to be yeah. like I had to work hard but like I actually feel sorry for some people because they don't even know they're stupid like they don't even know they're dumb. <laughs> like you know you like they can't even grasp the concept that you know like you my granddad used to say can you feel the pain and like now <laughs> and I never understood what he was saying and now I do you know um, um yeah so what so you you're getting fit again you're getting yeah. getting so you, your goal is to get your life back yeah yeah just just and is that that obviously involves uh, sort of getting the business to a point where you, you can step back a little bit? Hundred, yeah, hundred percent. And I think in early days, sometimes you let people that work in your business run your business rather than you running your business. Whereas yeah. I would, I've been, I probably maybe over the last six months, there's been times, six months to a year, where I employed people and they were real, real good workers, but they had shortfalls, whether that be. And this is where, like, especially in young blokes, like drinking and gambling is like fucking. Yeah, it's bad, eh? It's bad, you know. Like, I've, I literally, I've had workers that, are, that will borrow money off you, and you think they're buying food or whatever, you know. And yeah. they'll go to the pokies with you, like, and you're like, you got no money. Yeah, no, it's know? hard, mate. Eh? Well, what do you expect these days when it's all on your frigging phone, 100%, mate? And, bloody... and that's, and it's all after pay. Like, no one ever, see, and it's. That's where like a cashless society is probably bad because you don't appreciate it. Well, you don't see it going. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then uh so so there's been I've had employees that were awesome employees, but for their like they've had dramas with their missuses and stuff, and I've kind of let it slide to a point where you can't rein it back in, you know, and then yeah. they just start like not I think even on one of your jobs, like obviously like some builders use their own earth moving contractors or what have you. But I always have try and have a bloke there to drill the holes because yeah. otherwise you rock up and like nothing against people that drive excavators, but like he doesn't have to put the post in the hole, so he yeah. doesn't give a fuck if it's not in the right spot. You know what I mean? Yeah, a little plum or yeah, because yeah. so, you know if they go off skew, if you're in a meter in the hole, you got a 150 200 mil base plate. Yeah. Best case scenario, you got 50 mil cover, which is legal, like yeah. the legal minimum. You know, yeah. so you rock up to a job you got concrete booked to three o'clock and we'll hang and pour a job in a day. Like yeah. that's, that's, that, that's standard, but not if you're, yeah, not, the holes are a bit not out if the holes yeah. are out. Cause then you got to chip the hole, then you got to clean the bottom of the hole. Yeah. And, and it, you know, so like, <clears throat> I think it was even on one of your jobs. I just ate like one of the boys I had working for me and, he, and, and the problem was we were, we worked together. So we were probably pretty good mates as well. Just didn't rock up to drill the holes. So then yeah. like I'm, taken away from what I'm doing, I'm almost getting anxiety about it now, you know? Like, and so I just, I literally just got to a point where I was like, fuck this. I'm like, and like as much of a mate I am to the boys, I'm the boss and that, yep. like. Oh, I think, mate, then, that's an awesome, like the fact that you've realized that is, is a big thing. I, I struggled with that for a long time and I, do, I struggle a little bit now sometimes as well, but you definitely have to be the boss. You, there's a fine line between uh, being too much of one of the boys and, and not um not being the boss but and i don't know there's a lot in that like I, I still do think it's really important to um have that camaraderie go, like take the boys you, to a pub lunch you've you got to have a good relationship and that sort yeah. of stuff but but they, they I, have to know the the boundaries when the work's on yeah. the work's on and we've yep. got to work you know and then part of working is being punctual and and then that like you know and same as you, you're, you've named your business after yourself. I named, like, I see a lot of house raising companies out there, whether they they start with A because that's the old phone book trick or, or they yeah. some gimmick on 
the height of the house, rah, yeah. rah, rah. Oh, yeah. I'm a firm believer. In it. And people, like, even when I started my business, people say, oh, don't name it after yourself. It's uh, yeah. like it's bad business practice. But I, I didn't start a business. Not with the name like that, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, didn't, I didn't start a business. I didn't start a business to get it to a point and flick it off and have yeah. a bit some like everything I do and I know this is probably why I'll never I'll never be mega rich because I'm I give too much of a fuck about yeah. what I'm doing you know don't say like yeah don't I don't uh, yeah I don't, I don't I, and when I, don't. I say mega rich I mean like like cra- which I probably wouldn't be anyway but what I'm saying is like life is what you tell yourself I, mate I so you're, you're, yeah, you're yeah. setting yourself a, yeah. uh, a limiting belief by telling yourself that. I'll uh, take that on board. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is... You care. Always you say to the, the boys, effort. it's my name on the fence. Yeah. You know? You put a post in the hole and for whatever reason, uh, look, sometimes we're measuring up posts and that's that's why I do my own steel because it's a quick turnaround. Like, yeah. You drill the holes, you're on site the next day. There'd be t- there's still times when you get caught out with rain and you're like, fuck. Yeah. I couldn't imagine waiting a week like once you've drilled the holes, you know? Yeah. Or you, you see people that have ordered the post and then they hit rock on half the holes. So you got to cut every post, like do you know yeah. what I mean? It's just like, yeah, yeah so mate. That, I think it's a it's a smart there, move. There's still times when you put a we put a post in the hole, and you look up, and if you don't have minimum 250, 300 mil gap between the post and the bear, obviously you don't have that cover yeah. underneath the stump. And you look up, and like me and Sammy that do the stumps, they heads for me. We'll look at each other, and we'll be like, oh, and but and having that feeling isn't bad. But if you were to not pull that, because no one's ever going to see underneath that mm. post. However, that post is going to rust out because yeah. it's that far off the ground. Yeah. There's no concrete underneath it. Yeah, um, mate, the amount of renos we've done and we've pulled out old stumps and even even worse where the, the bottom of the stump obviously had been pushed down in slop or water and, and it's hanging out of the concrete like 50, 100 mil. Yeah. And it's sat there for however long. Like Eventually, it's going to fail. And that's... Um, uh, I hope that's that. That's it's, it's not so much there's things you do see where all the posts are in the right spot and and that sort of stuff because like that stuff you can get caught out for. It's the days when you're like, fuck, this is gonna cost me some money to <laughs> fix these ten stumps. We're gonna the, have to- um, yeah, no, mate. Look, look, well, I think the the fact that you've owned it, you're taking some personal responsibility now. You're getting yourself fit again. Um, so just quickly. Um, because I think you've given some great advice. We'll we'll start to wrap this up. You, like, what do you do? Like, what what's your hobbies? I'm pretty keen on the old car that you rocked up in. So, um, I, uh, what, what, what's what gets you away from me? And my, me and my little brother. My little brother is real similar person to me, except he probably rides my coattails. You know, so he probably <laughs> like so we we real into cars. Um, yeah. That like I used to be in. I I still got a couple of rotaries i used to be into rotaries and like the i thing won't we, hold that against you mate uh, the thing we've <laughs> probably got around lately is uh and when i say lately last three or four years is ls engines you know yeah. like so yeah. but we we sort of got onto them before like now coronavirus they're pretty expensive before that where you yeah. could buy like a vx commodore and we just go out to queensland raceway and just thrash yeah, it six. you know until we crashed it at, at the track because it was only two and a half grand yeah and then you just take the motor out and then get it like like so yeah. my little brother's got an mx5 that he's put a put a uh six liter turbo yeah, right. um l98 in so like which is which is crazy yeah. like it's like if anyone that knows cars you yeah. know so yeah it's awesome we, and then like so that's what that's what what we do what's is, the old what's the old jigger you turned up in today so i got a 64 impala um and then oh, i'm into american cars I, I like I like old Holdens. I'm probably not so much new. I'm not real big fan of new Commodores and stuff. And obviously, probably a bit young. I got priced out of the market on the old Monaros. Yeah. So I've, I've got around sort of American cars. So I've got a '64 Chevy C10 Ute yeah. and a '64 Impala, like a Ute and a car from the same year. Yeah, awesome. And I um, got both of them out of the states. You know, so. My Ute I bought out of the states off some Mexican as do. So like, do, you, do you get time to get out in them and use them a bit? Like yeah, Sundays I try and you know yeah. go for a two hour drive, three hour drive every every Sunday. Just no yeah, matter what I got on, you you got to do that. Otherwise, it's just you, no, you mate. Know. That's that is awesome. Um, look, so thanks heaps for coming in. Um, obviously we got a few jobs coming up, so we're we're going to be seeing you around. But um, 
I think everyone that's been watching today would definitely have got a lot out of that. Like you've given some good advice here in your story, where you've come from, hard times, good times, all those types of things. So appreciate your time, mate. And um, yeah, we'll uh, wrap it up. Awesome. Thank you. Cheers, mate. That's a bit awkward with there. <laughs> <laughs>